Uh, let's talk about the fiscal note. What type of fiscal note do we have on this bill? The fiscal note that I saw posted on the bill, which was posted very late in the process, was something I've never seen in the 50 years that I've been working on school finance in this legislature, and that's it's a one-year fiscal note. If I had gotten a one-year fiscal note for when I was chairing the Education Budget Committee, that bill would have been subject to a point of order. I don't know the current rules of the Senate, but it would have been subject to the point of order for a fiscal note that does not accurately describe the fiscal implications to the state of Texas, okay? So what the fiscal note says that you have is there's $500 million because the appropriations is limited to $500 million. First of all, that doesn't tell you about out-year costs, which is one of the things a fiscal note is supposed to do, is give you a five-year span of time. So there's no discussion or explanation of what the implications this might have over time. That's number one. Number two, as some people have discussed in prior testimony here, there is no limitation in this bill or anywhere else on the ability of the governor to transfer funds into that. And the governor's told us what his intent is. He wants an ESA for every child. So you could have the governor transferring literally billions of dollars into this to achieve the goal that he says he wants to accomplish. And again, you have no view of what that fiscal implication would be, uh, both in terms of, of who are the students that would, would be getting that money and uh, what that imp impact would be on the future budgets of the state of Texas. So that's concern number one with the fiscal note. Um, there's also a concern with the way that the, uh, the what has been termed the prioritization system deals uh, with who gets that money. Okay, uh, and some people have already spoken to this. If you take a look at the, the lottery prioritization system, it does not prioritize education or economically disadvantaged students. It caps the funding for, ed, uh, for economically disadvantaged students at no more than 40% of the total lottery positions, even though they're about 60% of the kids in the state of Texas. So in this lottery process, you would have a situation where at best, two-thirds of the economically disadvantaged kids would even be eligible to be in that lottery process, whereas the next category from 185 percent to 500 percent of, uh, of uh, the poverty level, that's about 30 percent of the population, and they get 30 percent of the prioritization, they would have 100 percent funding. But if you don't have public school students applying in any of those positions, if not enough or no public school students apply because they're not accepted by the private schools, okay. Or, Paul, Paul, no, 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 slow down because uh, we, we need to move forward. Okay, just real quickly on this real one. Real quickly, real quickly. Real quickly on this one point. Anyway, if, if for the variety of reasons that public school students don't apply or are not accepted into that, the bill then reserves all of that to those one million <coughs> kids who are currently being privately educated. So again, right. there's your $16 right. billion so dollar cost. I, I'd ask you to kind of work with us so we can make some suggestions to the chair concerning tighten up the language. I mean, this is a work in progress. Understand. Right. Be glad to work okay. with you, Senator. Thank you, Sen Thank you, Senator West. Members, any other questions? Thank you very much, Andrea.